Hi guys, welcome to this video. In this video, we have a parajumble questions without answer options. This is a CAT 2017 question. I am Prashant. I am the founder of Word Pandit, and I will be explaining the solution for this question. Difficult question, complicated question. The sentences are tough. The context is tough. The context is alien. So this is the kind of question that is going to pose a challenge in the exam, and you should only solve it if you are perfectly sure about it and if you understand the meanings of sentences if you don't you will be in trouble with this question i'm saying this right at the outset uh, the correct order of sentences in this particular case is 43512 why is this the case now if you look at this set of sentences very very carefully sentence number 4 is the most generic opening sentence here the 18th century english reader in the new world of global trade and global warfare so setting up the context uh, needed a dictionary with the authoritative acts of definitions of words of a language that was becoming seeded through the first british empire so during the first british empire right which was spreading through the 18th century uh, the language was spreading and the language was spreading hence it needed a dictionary which was authoritative in nature which people could refer to uh, now when this dictionary was needed right it says definition of a language that was becoming seeded throughout the first british empire by a vigorous and practical champion so this language it was getting seeded right throughout the british empire by a vigorous and practical champion where do we find this vigorous and practical champion we find it in him in sentence number 3 samuel johnson was a pioneer who raised common sense to heights of genius and a man of robust popular instincts whose watchwords were clarity precision and simplicity a vigorous and practical champion who believed in clarity precision simplicity so positive qualities of samuel johnson built upon these are added upon here remember sentence number 3 comes before any other sentence because this is the only sentence which highlights the full name the other sentences just use the second name johnson in this particular case uh and hence these sentences before these sentences can be used we need to use the sentence which has its full name hence the first two sentences 4 and 3 then we need the next sentence which tells us more qualities of samuel johnson right remember here we are introducing the man the next sentence which does the job of introducing the man is sentence number 5 uh, which johnson the johnson the johnson here is just highlighting the qualities of samuel johnson hence uh, the mod, the article the here used is for em emphasis it is meant to add on to samuel johnson's qualities since this is the first sentence about his qualities this immediately follows sentence number 3 sentence number 5 follows sentence number 3 the johnson who challenged bishop berkeley's solipsist theory a uh, solipsist is nothing else but is derived from the uh, solipsism solipsism is basically a theory which says that anything outside of the human mind uh, you are unsure of its existence it's a theory in philosophy so he challenged bishop berkeley's solipsist theory of non existence of matter by kicking a large stone i refuted thus he basically proved that things exist outside of the mind as well uh, bishop berkeley's solipsist theory was basically only my mind exists nothing outside of it if you kick a kick a stone you prove that the stone exists uh, is the same johnson for whom long language must have a daily practical use now this is where uh, samuel johnson is linked up with the english language so for general sentence introduces the context of the english language and the english reader 3 and 5 tell us about samuel johnson they highlight what is uh, samuel johnson all about and now statement number 5 right at the end talks about language must have a daily practical use now statement number 1 continues this thread of thought Johnson treated English very practically practical daily practical use treated English very practically as a living language with many different shades of meaning and adopted his, his definitions on the principles of English common law according to precedent so this is what he did masking a profound inner torment Johnson found solace in compiling the words of a language that was in its core's complexity and comprehensive genius the precise analog of his character so now how did he treat it he treated it as a living language with many different shades of meaning and adopted his definitions on the principles of english common law according to precedent precedent and now in statement number 2 uh, we are told how did he compile his words right so this is where his definitions are introduced here the compilation of words of the language is introduced so the degree of detail in sentence number 2 is greater right so sentence number 2 builds on what he introduces in sentence number 1 where the treat practical treatment of johnson's uh, the practical treatment of english by johnson it links up with sentence number 5 so sentence number 2 comes right at the end it goes with sentence number 1 explains what he's talking about in sentence number 1 his treatment of english in greater detail 
adds on more details to that so this is how you solve this particular question tough complicated question where you need to understand the small little clues you need to understand the fact that samuel johnson needs to come first before other references to johnson the johnson is when he uses uh, this particular phrasing it's a it's a phrasing meant for emphasis so these are small little link ups and clues that you need to use in this particular case in order to identify the answer hopefully so you're clear with the question now thank you very much for watching this video and happy learning